this is 3.3 .3 continued. I am in the middle of example two. We're going to find the relative extrema of f of x equals one half x minus sine x in the interval from zero to two pi. I paused this and I lost my progress, so I've already done the work here. So our first step that we wrote down in class was to find the derivative. So we have taken the function and found its derivative. Our second step is to find the critical numbers. So I have set our derivative equal to zero and solved it for cosine x, because you know those are glued together. So I solved it for cosine x and I found cosine x to be a half. And what we're asking is what angle x has a cosine of a half? So I'm looking for the ordered pair of a half on the unit circle. And you find that at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So those are our critical numbers. So now we're going to go and set up that big test, that big chart that we did today. But we're not doing it from negative infinity to positive infinity. We're doing it from 0 to 2 pi with our critical numbers. So I've set up my interval here from 0 to 2 pi. And you see that we have three different intervals we're looking at. So I've just set them up across the top. And then what we do is we find a good value in between that interval and we plug it into our derivative to test it. And it might be helpful with these, we're not as familiar with radians, to go ahead and use the unit circle to help you to find an, an angle between zero and pi over three. So I, f I chose pi over four. And when you go through the math and you plug it into your derivative, you get this. Square root of 2 over 2 is larger than a half, so that becomes a negative. So I'm decreasing. Super important that we go ahead and show that decreasing curve there. In this interval, I'm choosing pi. You could choose any angle you wanted in between there. When you go through and you plug it in for cosine of pi, you're going to get a positive, so I've done my increasing. And next, I chose 11 pi over 6, plugged it in. I got a negative, so that's decreasing. So, we've done all the work. They asked us where our relative minimums and our maximums are. That's where these curves are so important. So I've got from decreasing, oops, decreasing to increasing. So this value right here, that's my min. So if you follow that up to the top, that was pi over three, where we changed from decreasing to increasing. So we have a relative min at pi over three. And then on this side, we go from increasing to decreasing. And that happens right here at five pi over three. So that's our max. So we have a relative max at five pi over three. I'm afraid I had already gotten through the next example, too. We're going to find the relative extrema for f of x equals x squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds. They did not specify an interval, so we're using negative infinity to infinity. This is a chain rule question where we're ready to do our derivative. You need to notice that there's an inside part and an outside part. Okay, so we're on the interval negative infinity to infinity since they didn't restrict us. And we have a chain rule question, so we've got to treat that x squared minus 4 as just a quantity to the two-thirds. So it's chain rule comes, the two-thirds comes down to the front of x squared minus 1. You know what? Let's just do this from scratch. So this is something to the two-thirds. So my derivative says the power comes down to the front of the quantity, and that's to the one less. And then we need the derivative of the inside part. Now it's super important that we write this derivative as a fraction so we can do where it's uh, equal to zero and undefined. So the two and the two x are all that's in the numerator, and the three and the x squared minus 4 to the positive 1 third are in the denominator. So where is the derivative equal to 0? And where is the derivative undefined?
these will be our critical numbers. So we get zero here, divide by three. Cube both sides. Add four, take the square root. So we have three possible critical numbers on this interval. So we're gonna set our interval up. So you can see the different intervals that we're gonna have to test. So we have negative infinity to negative two, negative two to zero, zero to two, and two to infinity. And we'll be testing the values in these intervals in our derivative. So let's choose nice numbers like negative three. A number between negative two and zero would be negative one. I could choose positive one, and I could choose three. And our derivative, 4x over 3. x squared minus 4 to the 1 third. Okay, so this is our derivative. So you plug that in, you plug in a negative 3, and you're going to get negative 12 over 3 times 3 squared 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. It's all positive. Negative divided by positive is negative, so we're decreasing. Draw that little decreasing curve. Now let's plug negative 1 in. We get negative 4 over um, negative 1 squared. So 1 minus 4. Cube root of a negative is a negative, so we get a negative over a negative, which is a positive, so it's increasing. Let's plug in 1. The easiest way to do this really <coughs> is to plug your derivative into y1 and then just take your table for these values. So that's a positive over a negative, which is going to be a negative, which is decreasing. And last. Um, positive over positive is going to be a positive, so that's increasing, and so it's going up. Don't just think because it's decreasing, the next one will be increasing, because it could do decrease, decrease, then increase, and it could decrease the whole way. So you do have to check them. Now the last thing is, notice that you went from decreasing to increasing. So this is a, a valley, that's a relative min. So you have a min at negative 2. Here's a hill right here, so it's a max. It's a max at zero. And right here, we had a decreasing to increasing. That's another valley. So that's a relative min at two. Okay. One last one of these, and then we have a word problem. Relative extrema. Um, I think I'll just say that you could look at example four on your own. It's just a little practice with quotient rule. I don't think anything crazy happens for it. So I think you can just look at it on your own. I would look at it though, because you do get some um, imaginary roots and you need to see how they handle those. Last one, example five. <laughs> Neglecting air resistance, the path of a projectile is propelled in an angle theta is y equals g secant squared theta over 2 v naught squared x squared 
plus tangent of theta x plus h. And we are restricted in the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Wow, that's a complicated looking formula. Okay, it says y is the height, x is the horizontal distance, g is the acceleration due to gravity, v naught is initial velocity, and h is the initial height. Then it says um, let g be negative 32 feet per second. That's just the um, force of gravity on Earth in feet. They did not give us a value for theta. The initial velocity is 24. We're just plugging stuff in. The tangent of theta. They did not give us a value for x. And they gave us a value for height of 9. I didn't write this all out. Please look at page 182 to see where I'm getting all these values. Okay, they want us to find the value of theta that will produce a maximum horizontal distance. Horizontal distance was x, so we want the max. That's a relative max. So we're going to do the derivative. Twenty-four squared, I think, is five ninety-six times two. Maybe I should double check that. Y'all are showing up in my video. Five seventy-six times two. Eleven fifty-two. And then 32 over 1152 reduces to negative secant squared theta over 36 x squared. Lauren, you probably need to go back to your seat if you all are just being silly and not studying. No one else gets to sit like that. Okay, so. We're ready to take the derivative. Actually, there's no reason for us to take a derivative. They just want us to find the max, and the maximum is going to, this is a quadratic, so the maximum is just going to occur at the vertex. Let's see, they want the maximum horizontal distance. That'll be in between the x-intercepts, actually. So, if you've got a pro projectile that goes from here to here, the maximum horizontal distance will be in between these two x-intercepts, which are the solutions. So we have this kind of horrible quadratic. That's A. <laughs> Tangent of theta is B. And 9 is C. So we'll do quadratic formula. X is negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4A C all over 2A. So I'm continuing this up a little higher. This is actually really nice. Negative 4 times 9 is 36, and I'm dividing by 36, so that's just a 1. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so it's just plus secant squared theta. All over um, negative secant squared theta over 18.
to finish this next step, we need to realize that secant squared theta is tangent squared theta plus 1. That's a Pythagorean identity from last year. So, 